That's when prosecutors say the elected sheriff, Mickey Steins, walked into the chambers of District Judge Kevin Mullins for a private meeting. What happened next, no one in this small town expected. Reports that the sheriff looked at the judge's phone, set it down, and then fired his gun several times, taking the life of Judge Mullins. The sheriff then walked into the courtroom, laid down his gun, and surrendered himself. Sheriff Mickey Steins is now charged with first-degree murder and Today, the sheriff made his first appearance in court. We'll show you what happened as we are live in Kentucky with all the latest. I'm Vinny Politan. Thank you so much for joining us tonight here on Closing Arguments. This story still has everyone, everyone scratching their heads about how could this happen? Why could this happen? And what happened was you had a judge in his chambers shot eight times killed children without a father big loss to to his family there's the loss to the community everything else that goes along with it um but he was seemingly almost like executed right like taken it seems by surprise i don't think he was expecting a confrontation like this and whatever the, the nature of, of, of the why of it, clearly this is not the way that things should be handled. And he was shot and killed in his chambers. Um, and it comes down to the issue in the case, the issue in the trial moving forward. I think everyone is in agreement. If the sheriff grabs or has the judge's phone in his hand, as has been described from the video that apparently there is of this, no audio, but a video, looks at the judge's phone, puts it down, and then shoots him. If that's the way it went down, the question is, what was on the phone? What was on the phone? What would set off this man of the law, this, this sheriff, whose job is literally to protect that judge in the courthouse. Like, that's literally a big part of his responsibilities as sheriff. But he took his life, so something on the phone. What was it? That, to me, is what this whole case ultimately will be about in our system of justice in trying to figure out how to handle it. Because I don't think there's gonna be any sort of argument that somebody else did it. Not if there's a video, not if there's all these witnesses, not if he surrendered himself immediately afterwards. It's all about why. And it seems like the answer to why was on the judge's phone. Now, it's, it's murder charges against the sheriff. The most serious, this is, this is as serious as it gets. I mean, a potential death sentence is what you're talking about here. That's a potential for this. It's capital murder. And you've got to think the sheriff knows the law in Kentucky and understood what was going to happen when he decided to take that action and then surrender himself. So now the system takes over. And just like any other defendant in any other case, there are certain process and procedure that you go through once you've been arrested and charged with a murder. And the first thing that happens is a first appearance in terms of happening inside of a courtroom. And the first appearance, sometimes you learn a lot, sometimes you don't learn much. It depends upon the jurisdiction, it depends upon the judge, it depends upon what the lawyers are saying, what they're asking, what they're waiving, et cetera. But it's an important moment in the case because it really starts and sets things in motion for the very first time. So, Sheriff Sean Mickey Steins in court on the other side of the law, charged with murder, his first appearance, I'm going to show you everything that happened. All right, I'm going to call the case of Commonwealth versus Sean Steins, 24F-147, Letcher District Court. Is the uh, Commonwealth present? Yes, Your Honor. Good morning, Judge Ramsey Dallum on behalf of the Commonwealth. 
and Jackie Steele also on behalf of Commonwealth Yard. All right, thank you. And uh, I see the defendant, is that the defendant at the Leslie County Detention Center? Yes, sir. Yes. And who who's standing next to him? Uh, I'm Josh Miller, public defender of the Capitol Trials Branch. Danny Clark, jailer of Leslie County. All right, thank you. And uh, has the defendant filed a, a petition for indigency? Not at this point, Your Honor. Okay. And what about the Commonwealth? Does Commonwealth want to make any statements before I proceed with Raymond? No, Your Honor. Uh, other, Judge, other than I don't know why Mr. Miller is present. If he's not filed out of agency paperwork, uh, his office has not been appointed. Um, I don't know that he has any reason to be here as in an official capacity as an attorney. Right. Mr. Miller, uh, do you believe that he's entitled to a public defender at this time? I do, Your Honor. And why is that? This is a capital eligible case, and I believe that the cost of defending uh, the ethical defense of a capital eligible case will exceed his means. Would you like to respond to that, Mr. Steele? I would, Your Honor. A couple of things. One, I, I believe what he's telling me is that he's been out soliciting a client, which is obviously not uh, allowed under our ethical obligations as attorneys. Two, even if he hasn't, if he has and he's been out trying to discern how much his financial capacities are, he's wasting state resources uh, without an appointment. And this court is the party that appoints an attorney, not DPA, whatever division, just because they think he's going to need one. Do you like to respond to that, Mr. Miller? Your Honor, in cases like this, it is essential that a defense investigation start immediately. And I haven't solicited anything, but advised. Um, uh, Mr. Steins of his rights, and if the coroner appoints us, we will represent him. Is he still the sheriff of Leslie County? At this point, I believe so. Fletcher, oh, Fletcher County. Fletcher County, I'm sorry. Judge, I can't speak to that, and he currently he is still the sheriff of Fletcher County. Yeah, well, I don't think he would uh, qualify as an indigent defendant. Um, well, sir, we're happy to, um, or Mr. Steins is happy to put any paperwork, uh, file anything that would help the court make that determination. Obviously, the court is the one that appoints us. Has he filed an affidavit for indigency? Not at this point, Your Honor. All right, we'll proceed with formal arraignment. Um, are you Sean Steins? Yes, sir. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can't be used against you. Have your silence can't be used to find you guilty. The county attorney must prove your guilt, or the Commonwealth must prove your guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. You have the right to call witnesses on your behalf. You have the right to cross-examine witnesses called against you. You have the right to a speedy and public trial by a jury of your peers. You have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford an attorney, I'll appoint one to represent you. And you have the right to appeal any decision that I make. You're charged with murder, a capital offense here in Kentucky, a class A felony, punishable by 20 to 50 years in prison, 25 years to life in prison, 25 years to life without the possibility of parole and the possibility of the death penalty. Um, hey, do you have an attorney, Mr. Steins? I have not hired one. Have you tried to hire an attorney? Have you spoken to any attorneys about taking your case? No, no, sir. And are you telling me that you don't have the means to have you? Do you not have the means? Do you own a home? Yes. Do you own any other real estate? No, no place in Tennessee, but it's, I still won't afford it with the bank. Yeah, you don't know how much equity you have in your own home? My home and my property is paid for. And do you have an estimated value of, of that real property? Uh, I think the PBA has got it out for about 45000 And what's your income? Uh, 
it's based on a statute. I think this year it was going to be a hundred and fifteen. Do you have you a month savings bank accounts? I uh, had uh, a chicken. Sir, it's my understanding that he's in the process of losing his job as a sheriff of Ledger County, obviously, and will not have income going forward. Um, his family is not prepared for this eventuality. Um, and again, I think the cost of defending one of these cases can reach well into this several hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> You're entitled to, as uh, since you're charged with the felony, you're entitled to have a preliminary hearing within 10 days from the day of this arraignment. Um, do you believe you'll be able to obtain counsel to represent you on these charges before within those 10 days? I hope so. It's kind of hard, you know, for a man to have contact with people I need to. It's important to make the that it is going to take uh, a considerable amount of, of, of money to retain an attorney to represent you on this capital offense. However, I don't believe you do at this time qualify as uh, for public assistance due to the fact that you aren't indigent. However, based on the circumstances of this, of this case uh, and the fact that we do need to have a preliminary hearing within 10 days, I'm going to appoint the public defender's office to represent you uh, for the limited purpose of assisting you at your preliminary hearing. If and when this case does proceed to circuit court, uh, the circuit court may require you to hire your own counsel. Do you understand that, Mr. Stones? Yes, sir. All right. I'll enter. A, uh, does he want to enter a plea at this time? Your Honor, he would enter a plea of not guilty and request a date for preliminary hearing. All right. We'll set the preliminary, pre preliminary hearing next uh, Tuesday, um, October the 1st at 1 o'clock in West Liberty, Kentucky. Excuse me, Your Honor. We said October 1st at 1 o'clock. Yes, October 1st at 1 o'clock in West Liberty, Kentucky at the Morgan County Judicial Center. Thank you, Your Honor. Anything else before we adjourn this hearing? Not at this time, Your Honor. No, just Your one Honor. thing, Judge. I do have one thing, Judge, just for clarification. In regards yeah. to transportation for uh, Mr. The, the defendant, how would the court prefer? I don't care to do an order uh, for that uh, to be done. I was thinking that we would have to state police post aid transport if they would. Um, I don't know that we'll need an order. I'll just request it. And if, if that's a problem, we can we can work out other transportation. Is that all? Nothing further from our end, Your Honor. All right. This hearing's adjourned. Thank, Thank you. you. It would be you, sir. Yes, sir. Have a good day. You too, sir. Just under 10 minutes, he's apprised of his of the charges against him, his rights to remain silent, and a lot of talk about his representation. But it seems like Tuesday is the big day for that preliminary hearing. Joining us right now live from outside the Carter County Courthouse in Kentucky, uh, the man has been driving all around the state. Court TV crime and justice correspondent Matt Johnson is back with us tonight. Um, all right, Matt, this didn't strike me as your typical virtual um, hearing today. Benny, nice to see you. You're exactly right. And what stood out to me was, first off, this is considered a capital offense in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. He wasn't handcuffed. We saw that. And then we also learned that he is still actually the acting sheriff. He hasn't been removed. He hasn't resigned. That in itself, this defendant finding himself on the other side of the law is just so strange and so bizarre, and then accused of killing this judge in his chambers. Well, the other things that stood out is the fact that you have a public defender 
who wasn't asked to even be there. This defendant didn't even fill out the right paperwork to have him there, and he's already, you know, volunteering his services and standing there during this uh, high-profile case hearing. Um, and then because everyone is so intertwined in these tight-knit communities here in Kentucky and the players being that that they may and a lot of people recusing themselves including judges and and uh, you know law enforcement and you also have um, attorneys recusing themselves including the Commonwealth attorney in Letcher County um, you have people appointed in the case so that puts all of the players in different areas around the state which is the reason why we've been driving so many miles so you had this take place this crime in the Letcher County Courthouse that's in that small town and then from there housed in Leslie County Detention Center where we were last night Vinny that's 60 miles away that's where this defendant appeared via zoom and then the judge is here where I'm standing 120 miles north in Carter County because again he's a special appointed judge to hear this case for this matter right now before it goes to big court and um, and that's why you have all of pretty much the entire state uh, being involved in this case this high profile case that is shocking everybody and the preliminary hearing is that going to be where you are tonight in, in Carter County Kentucky next week no that's gonna be held 40 miles away from here and that's going to be over in West Liberty in a different courthouse. Okay. So that was shocking news to hear because uh, this special judge, this was his chambers here. This was his courtroom. Wow. Okay. It makes things much more complicated uh, because of the nature of the community and the nature of the defendant and the victim in this case. All right. How about at the courthouse today? Who, who was, what was the scene like? Did you see anyone? Did anyone show up there? Because all of this is taking place virtually. Yeah, and it's an international story, so we really didn't know what to expect, right? There was media lining up for about a good hour to get into the courtroom, but the media was pretty much local reporters, newspaper reporters. There was one TV journalist um, for uh, one of the stations here locally in Kentucky, and then we were the only network present in person. Um, seated right behind me and my producer, Anna, were um, two ladies who didn't want to identify themselves. I, I introduced myself, um, but it turns out, according to court staff, one may have been the widow of the victim in all of this, Judge Kevin Mullins. Um, she didn't want to um, say that she was related to the case. She had no comment. So we're still working to verify that. But as for the suspect in all of this, um, we're being told here on the ground um, and through my sources that he is not speaking with his family. So I didn't see any representation for the suspect. Again, he wasn't in this courthouse. He was 60 miles away. But um, he hasn't spoken to his family, according to my sourcing. Wow. Wow. Because usually, and he's saying it's, uh, you know, not so easy to find a lawyer. Usually, like, your family will help coordinate all that. That's an interesting development uh, in, in, in all of this. All right. So what, what is next here? What, what does the road ahead look like? All right. So that road ahead takes us, again, 41 miles down the road to West Liberty, where this preliminary hearing is going to take place. And in the Commonwealth of uh, Kentucky here, it, it has to take place within 10 days for such a serious crime, um, which is the reason why the public defender was appointed. This is taking place next week, next Tuesday on October 1st. Um, the judge has requested that transport. You just heard that as part of this hearing today. So Kentucky State Police, uh, they'll be transporting this defendant. So he will be there in person and at that time it'll be interesting to to see whether or not they call any witnesses um, what evidence they present because maybe then we'll hear a little bit more about the motive Vinny. all right matt johnson in kentucky my guess is you're going to be spending a lot of time in kentucky in the near future thank you so much matt when we come back we're going to speak with the he's a criminal attorney but he also does civil work the attorney who deposed this sheriff just three days before the shooting because the sheriff's being sued by this attorney. He's gonna join us, plus, coming up next hour. 
Tonight on Vinnie Politan investigates new civil allegations against hip-hop mogul Sean Diddy Combs as he sits in jail on federal criminal charges. Still a lot of unanswered questions, and tonight we investigate. Join Court TV's Vinny Politan. In every story, in every trial, every case, there's at least two sides to it. To dive into the latest. Oh, my God. And breaking true crime stories. This was a very targeted, very personal attack. Inside. I've never seen that in Discovery. I've been incarcerated three years. And outside of the courtroom. She's a psychopath. Now, let's look at the other side of all of that. Vinny Politan investigates. Tonight, 9, 8 central. Only on Court TV. You're entitled to, as uh, since you're charged with a felony, you're entitled to have a preliminary hearing within 10 days from the day of this arraignment. Um, do you believe you'll be able to obtain counsel to represent you on these charges before, within those 10 days? I hope so. It's kind of hard, you know, where I'm at, have a contact with people I need to. So there you see Mickey Steins, Sheriff Mickey Steins, in his, his first appearance, um, talking about the fact that he hasn't gotten counsel yet. The public defender sort of jumps in there. But I've got a lot of questions uh, about this whole thing, the setup, the way things went down today, and how things will go in the future. So let me bring in my special guest joining me. Um, by phone tonight, the attorney who represents the woman suing Sheriff Mickey Steins, Ned Pillersdorf, is with us. Ned, thanks so much uh, for joining us. Uh, great to have you with us tonight. And the first thing that struck me about all of this was that, and, and Matt Johnson pointed out as well, if you take a look here, we could drop those words real quick so we could see his hands. He's not cuffed. In this arraignment, he's charged with a capital offense. He's standing there. The jailer is right next to him. Um, and the public defender is next to him as well. Is that normal in Kentucky? You're arrested for murder, your first appearance, you, you, you're not cuffed? The fact that he's not cuffed is, is not cool. Remember, he's in a jail. <laughs> what is unusual, he had the local jailer standing next to him. Uh, it, this is all just absolutely bizarre and unusual. But the, he's in jail. Generally, uh, most criminal arraignments in Kentucky, the, the clients are not cuffed, but they are generally on video these days. Okay, so they'll appear from the from the jail. It's a secure facility where it is, so there's no need to necessarily cuff them like sometimes that they'll do if they have to transport them or walk them through a hallway or bring them into a courtroom uh, temporarily. Okay, so that's not a problem. Um, what are your thoughts uh, about the public defender in, in this case? It seems like the public defender was jumping in. This is the sheriff. He's making $115,000 a year. He owns his home outright. Um, was, was that a normal development as well, appointing the public defender to allow him to represent him for this uh, preliminary hearing coming up next week? Yeah, this has been a, 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 a series of, of events that has gone on before in Kentucky courts. We have a very active public defender system in Kentucky. Uh, I used to be a public defender, and I've been a criminal defense lawyer for 43 years. And what defender system looks at, especially when there's a capital case, they want to get to a client quickly because often in a case like this, statements or developments early on are really important, so they're very aggressive. Now, you heard the prosecutor basically say, hey, you're soliciting business. Uh, there's some truth to that. But on the other hand, I think what the public defender office will say, hey, you're trying to kill my client here, and I need to get to him. Uh, it is bizarre, and that's a good word for this, that we have a sheriff making $115,000 a year uh, basically being represented by a public defender. Uh, I was quite impressed with Judge Wilhoy. Um, the reason I think he appointed the public defender, there's going to be a preliminary hearing in 10 days. Words cannot express how important that hearing is. A preliminary hearing in Kentucky, especially if you're a criminal defendant, and I know this as a criminal defense lawyer, that is so important. 
What will happen at the preliminary hearing, which, will, by the way, we must see TV here in Appalachia, the prosecutor will ask, put on a witness, and just bring out enough evidence to show the judge, hey, there's probable cause. The first question I ask at the thousand preliminary hearings I've done in my case, tell me what evidence there is that suggests my client is guilty. And that's where you try to find out everything about the case. And in this particular case, the second question I ask is, what was on those cell phones? Uh, from all the media reports, the shooting happened right after uh, Steins and Judge Mullins looked at each other's cell phones. And I think a week from now, assuming the preliminary hearing happens, uh, we'll know a lot more. Having said that, I'm willing to bet there won't be a preliminary hearing. I suspect, given the aggressiveness of the uh, special prosecutor today, they may rush into Lesser Circuit Court and get an indictment before the preliminary hearing. So they go to the grand jury, get an indictment before Tuesday, October 1st, then there's no hearing on the 1st, and the case automatically is now in the circuit court, and, and then the process begins again, and he'll, he'll appear in front of a judge? That is a common tactic where the prosecutor fears, especially in a case where there's a lot of publicity, because really a preliminary, that's where you find out just about everything. As a criminal defense lawyer, you can ask just about any question you want. And what's different between a preliminary hearing and a trial, tell me what rumors you've heard about all this. Tell me about all the single, double, and triple hearsay that's been out there. Uh, those questions are asked, and most judges allow you to do that. It's also not uncommon for a preliminary hearing for the prosecutor to put on a witness who doesn't have first-hand knowledge. I've had preliminary hearings where the police officer said, well, another police officer told me this and this, and that's all the evidence you have. So the tactics for the preliminary hearing, if it happens, would be very interesting. But in terms of, you know, we got a, we're traumatized here in Appalachia, and everybody wants answers, and we may have a lot next Tuesday. That preliminary hearing is must-see TV to. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Let me it, ask you this. Is there any chance that he gets out on bond in Kentucky? On these charges? No. No chance. No chance. You know, I don't know what Mr. Stein's defense is. And remember, he's obviously presumed innocent. One tactic you might do at a preliminary hearing, you got to know your case. And that's why it's really important that he got a lawyer now because the preliminary hearing's next week. Sometimes you might put on evidence. Now, when I put on evidence for preliminary hearing, I'm generally not going to get the judge to say there's no probable cause. I'm going to put on evidence to show that the bond ought to be reduced. But the fact that this is a capital case, and by the way, it's a capital case, because the Kentucky statute says that death penalty is possibility if you kill a public official. Uh, so the chances of him getting a bond are, are, are zero, zero. Gotcha. Um, how about him as sheriff? What Do, do we know what it takes for him to lose his job as sheriff? Does he have to step down? Um, does the county have to fire him? Is, is it the governor? How does that work? Do we know? Uh, he can resign. Uh, ironically, in the next county over, I just got done representing the Commonwealth attorney in Perry County, which borders Letcher, and my client was accused of, of serious crimes in federal court. And I immediately told him, you need to resign today as Commonwealth attorney, and he did. I told him he needed to resign today as an, as an attorney, and he did. And, and the reason I did that to eventually soften his eventual sentence. Now, if, if I'm advising Mr. Sines, I would advise him to go ahead and resign today. Uh, I just know from representing public officials over the years, judges really frown on the fact that Hey, you're in jail. You can't be the Commonwealth attorney. You can't be the sheriff, we know. Uh, so I would advise him to do that. Uh, he doesn't have to, but I would sure recommend that. And finally, there was something mentioned here. They were talking about the cost of this case. The public defender said this one, a case like this, will cost several hundred thousand dollars. Um, and, and, and I don't know if different... Your thoughts on that. Is that about the ballpark that a private attorney would would need to represent the sheriff in this case? 
think a private attorney would price the case on how defendable the case is. Let's say he has a pretty good defense. Uh, and there's all sorts of social ch chatter that there may be a defense. You would price it less. But let's say there's really no defense. Um, and basically, you know you're looking at a death penalty penalty phase where you're trying to avoid the death penalty. Uh, that's expensive. Fifty to a hundred thousand is a ballpark figure. Um, but if he has, in fact, a a very strong, legitimate defense, um, there might be some attorneys who do it for nothing, just for the publicity or the fact that they think, hey, what he did was justified. Me? I have no idea yeah. why Sheriff Stein did that. And there's not a person walking around in Appalachia today who is not wondering the same thing. Absolutely. Ned Pil Pillersdorf, great to ha have you on the program again. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll speak again for sure next week. Thank you so much.